beautiful man. It's a lunar eclipse. It's starting. And you know, the mockers and the scoffers, they all say, man, there's been lunar eclipses and solar eclipses since the dawn of creation. And they're right. There have been. And science has explained it. We understand it. A solar eclipse is when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. And a lunar eclipse is when the earth passes between the moon and the sun. But just because we can explain something scientifically doesn't do away with the significance of a celestial event prophetically. Remember the Tetrad and the sequence of four blood moons and a two-year period that happened a while ago? And You know, there's a comet that'll be visible as bright as Halley's Comet, they say, as bright as Venus, October the 15th, 16th, and 17th. And I'll, I'll be out to film that one too. Hopefully we'll have clear skies and we can see it. But You know, what does the scripture say? The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. You know, the stars and the heavens, the moon, the planets, they declare the glory of our King. Hallelujah, glory to God. And when I see the work of God's hands, when I look at the beauty of the moon and the stars, yes, I have to give glory to God. I have to raise my hands to heaven and praise the, the maker, the one who made these things. They're so beautiful. And if, if he made the moon and the stars and the planets, and they're all so gorgeous and beautiful, imagine how beautiful he is if we were ever to see his face one day. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's a song we used to sing years ago, based off that song, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, my Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, my Lord. Now I wish I brought my guitar. <laughs> We're all all alone with God tonight. What a what a wonderful what a wonderful place to be alone with our Heavenly Father, spending time with him. You know he's coming back soon. Church, bride of Christ, he's coming to claim his bride soon. Wake up. Get ready. Get right. Oh, I've been repenting of so many things. Not out of a spirit of condemnation, but out of a spirit of, of love, of gratitude for all that he's done for me. I don't want to stay the same. I don't want to be trapped in my old sinful ways. I want to walk in holiness before him. I want to live a pure life, a life that pleases him because I love him. No, it's not condemnation, it's, it's salvation. It's, it's not chains of morality, it's the opposite. Chains have been broken. Chains that have bound me all my life and he set me free of them. Hallelujah, glory to God. And he'll set you free too, bride of Christ. I don't know that day, I don't know that hour, but we're in the season. Everything in 
Matthew chapter 24. Read that chapter. His disciples came and asked him, Lord, what will be the sign of your return, your coming? Everything that chapter describes is going on simultaneously all at once right now. So, you know, just like we know when spring is here, when the fig tree begins to blossom, you can't point to it at the exact second and minute and say, okay, the leaves are going to unfurl and it's going to blossom at, you know, three hours and 22.9 seconds on, uh, you know, September the 28th. No, no, you can't say that. But, but you know when spring is here, you know, the bees start buzzing, the butterflies start fluttering, the flowers start to bud and they're just getting ready to burst into blossom. And, and you can't point to the exact moment, but you know that spring is, it's just, it's just around the corner. And it, it could dawn on you at any moment. And he said, what did he say? You know, two will be grinding wheat. One will be taken and one left. Two will be in the field. One taken and one left. Two will be in the bed. One taken and one left. You know, he said, keep watch over and over and over again. Because you don't know the hour that your Lord is returning. And he's coming to claim us soon, right? And there's birth pains coming. You know? We're going to get out of here before he pours out his wrath. I believe that. But he's not going to pour out his wrath on the bride. But there's nothing in scripture that says we're going to avoid persecution and trials and tribulations. Oh, no. <laughs> so pray for the strength to stand for what's coming. Pray for the strength to endure. Pray for the strength not to deny him. I'm not going to be prideful about it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'll never deny you, Lord. And then like Peter, before the cock crows three times, I would have denied him. I disowned him. Claimed I never knew him to save my own skin. You know, I, I'm going to fall on my face in humility here. I'm weak. I've lived a soft life. I don't know what it's like to be persecuted. Nobody ever threatened to take my head because of my faith in Christ. I never even lost a job because of my faith in Christ. Man, if anything, instead of suffering for Jesus, I, I, I give him a bad name and I gotta repent of that. I'm not a good, good witness, but, but I don't know what persecution is. Come on, if you live in America, if you live in the West, we have it good, guys. We've had a soft life. You know, we think persecution is, you know, somebody, you know, gave us the side eye because we said prayers over our food at a restaurant. That's not persecution. You know, somebody didn't like our Christian bumper sticker. That's not persecution. Persecution is like what happens overseas and other countries, you know, where, you know, some of them folks, like, like those Orthodox Christians, what was it, the, the, I'm sorry, the Coptic Christians, they lost their heads because they wouldn't deny Jesus Christ. They wouldn't convert to Islam. They wouldn't deny the Lord. And they had the faith and the fortitude to stand even when the blade was at their throat and going to cut their neck and they were going to lose their heads and they lost their heads for, for the kingdom of God and their blood was precious. Their blood was precious in the sight of the Lord. Hallelujah. But you know, the, the church has... The seeds of the gospel have been watered with the blood of martyrs throughout history. It's because of the martyrs that that so many people have come to know the Lord. They've seen people's faith and, and that they were willing even to give up their lives for the Lord. And who's to say we won't have to before we get out of here? You know, if, if we're blessed of the Lord and fortunate, we might be kind of worthy to escape. And I think that's the rapture. Praise God. So get ready. But also pray, church. Pray, bride of Christ, for strength to stand. I ask the Lord humbly in my weakness and in my I've lived a soft, easy life. I've never known real persecution. Nobody's ever threatened to take my head or kill me because of Jesus. And I I pray and I beg the Lord to give me strength to stand and not betray him. I want to be loyal and faithful to him to the end even if it costs my life. And I can't do it on my own strength. I don't know about you, church. There's no room for pride and arrogance here. I'm going to be honest. You know, we, we want to say it, but when the blade's at our throat, we might do anything to save our skin. 
And man, if we took that mark, it's over. You know, now, praise God, we can repent of our sin. If we're going the wrong way, we take a wrong turn, we can turn around and, and change our direction and, and go the right way, the path that leads to life. But if we take that mark, there's no repentance. There's no turning back. It's forever. It's permanent. We're swearing allegiance to the devil himself, to the Antichrist. We can't. We can't take that mark, no matter what. I don't know why I'm saying all this. Maybe it's for somebody. Maybe somebody's listening. Sometimes I'm just... I feel like a rambling fool. A rambling madman. But I want to be with Jesus. Don't you want to be with Jesus? If, if possible, I hope we get raptured out of here and we can avoid that kind of test. But you know, those, those Coptic Christians who lost their heads... They didn't get raptured out first. They had to face persecution. And what if we have to face persecution? What are we going to do? You know? Pray. Draw close to the Lord. This is so close to His return. And so close to the coming of Antichrist. And so close to the mark of the beast. And, and so close to all these things. Trials and tribulations. Pray for strength to stand. Repent. You know, ask yourself, is there anything in your heart that displeases Him? I mean, praise God. There, there's big sins in my life He set me free from years ago. You know? And it was all His power. It had nothing to do with me. I can't take any credit for it. Carly's not spiritual. You know? Carly's... Uh, I feel like a scumbag. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a spiritual guru. I'm not super spiritual. Man, I'm, I'm the rustiest, dullest tool in God's shed. If God uses me, the only reason God will use me is because He likes a challenge. It's because in His contest with the devil, the devil's going to pick the sharpest, most beautiful, strongest sword. But, but God's going to one-up the devil. God's going to be like, you know, God's going to be like, okay, you know, I'm, God is so powerful that He can take the weakest and, and the biggest fool among us all, the most foolish me. And God can use the weak to confound the strong and the foolish to shame the wise. And then God gets all the glory. People look at Carly and they're like, well, I sure know Carly didn't do that. And Carly can't even tie their shoes. <laughs> I can't even get out of bed right without stumbling. I, literally, I, I get out of bed too fast now and my, my face plant on the floor. And I'm just saying, you know, uh, if I do anything for the Lord, that has nothing to do with my ability or my intelligence or my beauty or my strength or my speed because I don't have any of that. Nothing to do with my talent or my skill. It's only because I, I willingly offer my heart to the Lord and my body as a living sacrifice, as a vessel, as a temple for the Holy Spirit. And I want to live a pure and holy life before Him. And, and because of that, He'll choose to use me, the rustiest, most broken, dullest blade in his entire collection of, of tools, you know? I'm definitely the, the dullest tool in his shed, but, but God will still use me. And if he talked about the election in November, and I just... I feel like the Holy Spirit says prepare, not only spiritually, but, uh, you know, maybe you have, you know, physically. I'm not telling you to be living in a spirit of fear, live in a spirit of trust, you know, that He'll carry us through it and take care of us no matter what. But, but look, in Florida, we prepare for hurricanes every year. It's not paranoia. It's not a lack of faith in God. It's, it's just common sense. We know every year we get bad storms. That's just the nature. If you live in Florida, you accept that. You're going to get hurricanes every year. And a lot of times we'll go without electricity for several weeks sometimes. No food in the grocery stores. No running water. So we prepare. In hurricane season, you know, in the summertime, when it begins, we, we all stock up on water. We keep... You know, we either buy bottled water or we'll just fill up like milk jugs and tea jugs and tap water. 
keep it in our garage or our cupboard. We stock up on non-perishable food that doesn't need to be refrigerated and that won't go bad, like, you know, canned soup, canned beans, um, ramen noodles, you know, things that are cheap, not expensive, but things that, that will last several years if need be without refrigeration or electricity. We, we have propane stoves we can cook on, you know, batteries and flashlights and candles if we have to go a couple of weeks of no power. And, and that's just common sense, you know? And that's all I'm saying for the election, my friends. Look, we're in a precarious position. It doesn't matter who wins. I don't care who you're rooting for, Trump or Kamala. Half the country hates each one of them. If Trump wins, then the followers of Kamala will, will probably riot and set buildings on fire. <laughs> Burn half the country down. And if Kamala wins, man, I, I, I see a lot of these MAGA people on YouTube threatening to take to the streets with guns and rifles and shoot their neighbors. And, and then they'll be setting the buildings on fire and burning things down. Either way, it might be months before law and order is restored in America. You know, grocery store shelves might be empty. I don't know what's going to happen after the election, but I just think it's wisdom. I think it's common sense that have water and food and candles enough to go several months if need be and a lot of people I hear on YouTube you know I'm no prophet I even like the discernment that it seems most Christians have I'm I'm kind of like the fool who rushes in where angels fear to tread <laughs> you know I test the spirits by the Word of God that's why I study the Word of God so hard but I don't I don't really have a strong sense of discernment it's not my spiritual gift I don't know what my gift is. Stupidity. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if that could be a gift. No, I don't know. The gift of faith, maybe. But it's definitely not discernment. Some of you guys out there are way wiser, way more discerning than I am. I just know, I just know what I know by reading the Word of God. And I test all the spirits. Whatever I hear, if it goes against the Word of God, I throw it away. I don't listen to it. And you should too, my friends. You know... Test the spirits. Don't don't accept every prophecy. Don't accept every vision and dream and revelation. If it contradicts the word of God, throw it away. You know? That's the ultimate litmus test. Alright? What does the Bible say Jesus was? The word of God. It says, in the beginning was the word. Alright? He was with us and among us. God incarnate. He walked among us. But Jesus, scripture calls him the word of God. So he is the word of God. So he's not going to contradict his own word. He's never going to tell us something that contradicts his word. Because that's his integrity. His integrity is his word. And we have it. We have an amazing tool. We can test every spirit, every prophecy, every dream, every vision with. To know whether or not it comes from God. And that is the word of God. We've got to study it. We've got to get it in our heart. You know, it has to permeate our being. Let's see. Well, it's getting darker now. So this is not a prophecy. I don't have a dream. You know, I don't have a supernatural visitation from the Lord. I just feel like the Holy Spirit is impressed upon my heart to prepare myself spiritually for the aftermath of the election in November. And to prepare my family. I bought, you're going to laugh, I bought like $30 worth of ramen noodles. That was like six cases. It's dirt cheap. They're like 50 cents. At, you know, they're high in sodium and they're not good for you. and They're just empty calories. But hey, it'll keep you alive. And if you don't have a lot of money to spend on food, you know, 30 bucks these days, that's not even half a tank of gas. But six cases of ramen noodles could literally feed my family for a couple of weeks and and I'm gonna add more into my pantry as, as I have extra money each each payday I'm gonna buy you know I got a bunch of cans of beans and you know I got bags of rice just non-perishable stuff doesn't need to be refrigerated I can cook it with my on my propane stove if I don't have power so children of God bride just just prepare and I don't think it's going to be long. I, I've heard prophecies from people saying that this election is going to kickstart the end of days, the end times. And I believe it. 
that seems to bear witness in my spirit. All the things I see happen in all the birth pains, all the events happening around us, I, I do believe it, it's going to set the stage for the Antichrist. Whatever crisis happens after the election, and, and you know, I don't, I don't know what part America plays. I don't know if there'll be an America, America Babylon. <laughs> we are part of the Babylon system. I love this country, but there's no doubt about it. We're part of Babylon. We, we're part of the, you know, our, our church, both Catholic and Protestant, is, has become the harlot who rides the beast. They don't preach the gospel of Jesus anymore. They don't preach the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They preach a gospel about money and power and politics and, and actually about vengeance and violence. They try to take the government into their own hands. And, and I don't think that's God's will, you know. The scripture says we, as a soldier, we shouldn't become entangled in civilian affairs. And the scripture says we're citizens of heaven. So if we're citizens of heaven, we're no longer citizens of this world. We've renounced our citizenship. And we have to maintain diplomatic neutrality, you know. We're not supposed to cut the love of God off. We're not supposed to cut our our witness off to somebody just because of their political party. It doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat or whatever else there is. You know, I don't know all the, all the political parties out there, but those are the two I know. It doesn't matter. We gotta preach the gospel to those people. We gotta show the love of God to those people because who knows? Who knows that they might give their heart to Christ? Look, remember Paul? Before he became Paul the Apostle, he was Saul the murderer. He had the blood of Christians on his hands. He went around stoning Christians. Literally killed them. Matter of fact, when he got saved, they were so afraid of, of Paul, who was then Saul, they wouldn't meet with him. You know, they were afraid he was going to kill them. So Paul, Saul, excuse me, Saul the murderer, the killer of Christians, with bloody hands, after he met Jesus and repented, he became Paul the Apostle and wrote half the New Testament. But that's the gospel and the grace of God. And if we don't understand that, we don't understand grace and we don't understand the gospel. Look at Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' most loyal disciples. All right, she was the disciple to whom Jesus appeared first after the resurrection. He could have appeared to any disciple, but he chose Mary Magdalene, the first. But what was Mary Magdalene before she repented, before she met Christ? She was a prostitute possessed with seven demons. But Jesus cast those demons out of her and set her free. And her heart and her mind was changed and she was transformed and became a new creation. Just like Paul became a new creation. And you know, brothers and sisters, some of us may have committed the most heinous sins you can imagine. But I don't care what we've done. I don't care what you've done. There's nothing we've, we've done that the grace of God can't deliver us from it. The blood of Jesus, there's no sin the blood of Jesus can't wash away. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, John the Baptist said. Okay? He's God's ultimate sacrifice, the last sacrifice ever needed. That's it. The buck stops with Jesus. Scripture tells us if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now is the time to repent, my friend. Now! If there's anything we're doing that's not pleasing the Lord, lay it down. Get rid of it. Ask Jesus to take it away from you, and he will. You know, don't try to do it in your own power. You can't be good enough to earn salvation on our best day. You know, be in the best goody tissues we could be. The scripture says that's nothing but filthy rags that we'd offer to the Lord. Our, our very best is filthy rags, so there's no hope. If, if we're going to depend on trying to be good to get to heaven, we're lost forever. We're not going to make it, okay? We'll go to the other place. Look, think of it like this. If there were any other way, do you think God would have allowed His only begotten Son, whom He loves with all His heart, to die a painful death on a cross and, and to be separated from Him? Do you think God would have allowed that if there was some other way for us to be saved? If we could be saved through the law, if we could be saved through works of man, do you think Jesus would have died on a cross? No way. 
So if we try to offer God our works and our righteousness, which is filthy rags, it's like the ultimate blasphemy. It's like a slap to the face of God. It's the ultimate disrespect. What we're doing is we're rejecting the gift of His Son. And we're rejecting the blood of Jesus. And we're trying to substitute our good works and our good deeds. And my friend, that won't fly. It's not going to make it. That's the ultimate blasphemy. That's the ultimate insult to God. The only salvation is if we accept God's free gift. You know, if, if we accept the death of Jesus. The scripture tells us that, you know, the wages of sin is death. When we commit sin, we earn death as our wages. But Jesus sets us free from that because the life of something is in its blood, Scripture tells us. <clears throat> All right? The life of something is in its blood. And only by blood can sin be atoned for. And because Jesus, an innocent man, shed his blood for us on the cross, it atones for our sin. It pays the penalty, the price of our sin. You know, God looks at the innocent death of Christ and he looks at the guilt of our sin and he's, he pardons our sin in his justice and in his righteousness. You know, he can't just look the other way at all the evil that we do, all the sins we do, but, but because of Jesus, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he looks at the blood of Jesus, the innocent blood of the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world, like John ba the Baptist said, and, and he says, okay, I, I can pardon, I can forgive all of them, even in my righteousness, even in my, my justice, as a just God who must punish the guilty and the wicked, I can forgive all of them because of what Jesus, my son, has done, the work that he did on Calvary. That's why when he died, he said, to tell us that it is finished. The work was finished. The redemption of mankind had been completed. And all we have to do, my friend, is just receive that gift receive that beautiful gift of forgiveness and we are set free and we have eternal life hallelujah hallelujah glory to God what a gift and, you know if, if you don't know him now's the best time wherever you are whatever you're doing you can stop stop and just pray a short prayer it doesn't have to be you know, any special words. It doesn't have to be in Latin or Hebrew or some fancy language. It doesn't have to be a ritual. Just be real with God. He's real with you. Talk to him like, like you would talk to your buddy, your best friend. Tell him what's on your heart. You know, say your own prayer, but it could, it could be something like this, okay? Heavenly Father, I come before you from. Father, I know I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm... I'm not going to try to pretend to be something I'm not. I'm a sinner. I look at my life and I realize even my, my goodness is filthy rags. Even on my best day, I'm wretched. God, I, I need Jesus in my life. I need your forgiveness. I need the grace of Christ. I need the blood of the Lamb to atone for my sin. The, the, the wages of my sin is death, God, I know. But the, your gift through Christ is life. And Lord, I receive that gift right now. I receive the gift of Jesus Christ in my life. Lord, let the blood of the Lamb wash away my sins and save my soul. Bring me, adopt me into your family through the blood of Christ. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and let me walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You could have prayed that prayer with me Or you could pray your own prayer But just be real with God You know if, if the Holy Spirit has convicted you If you actually feel Hey, you know I'm not the good person I thought I was Maybe there are things in my life that You know That's, that's the Lord speaking to you He's taken our, our heart of stone And he's softening it And giving us a heart of flesh instead He's taken our pride and he's humbling us to the point where we can come to him with the heart of a child and admit we're not perfect. We're not even close to good. <laughs> where we can admit we need the gift of his son. 
where we won't blaspheme or insult his name anymore by trying to offer him our own good works, but instead we'll receive the gift of forgiveness through Christ, his son. And if you pray that prayer, you'll feel different. I promise, a burden will be lifted off your shoulders. You'll feel joy in your heart. And then just, just begin to read his word. Begin to read his word. I'd start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels. The whole Bible's beautiful. You, know, you want to read the whole Bible eventually, but, but maybe start with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because those are the words that Jesus said and the things that Jesus did. And he's the one who started it all, right? He's the founder of our faith. He's the one who taught us the Gospel. If you got one of those red letter Bibles, pay special attention to the words in red in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's where you want to start. And then read the rest of the whole Bible. Daniel and Revelation. And, and there's so many. You know, all scripture is good. It, it changes us. It chisels us. It makes us new creations in God's image. But you got to start someplace. Well, I love you, my friends. I got to get back. It's almost midnight. And I gotta get up early for work in the morning. Bless you, bride. He's coming soon. Be encouraged. Okay? Be encouraged. Cast your burdens on him. Cast your cares on him. Because he loves you. Don't carry those burdens by yourself. And all these birth pains keep happening. Remember what he said? Look up, because our redemption draws nigh. Take hope, bride. Take hope. But be prepared. Keep that lamp filled with oil. Keep that wick trimmed. Because the bridegroom is coming soon in the middle of the night. And we all want to go with him. He told us he was going to prepare a place for us. And if he, if he would, he would come back and take us to be with him where he is. And he is coming back, bride, very soon. Peace to you in Jesus Christ and love. Amen.